Okay, I'm a Dude, bit delusional. I think Bear is the best in the game. So like, I think- huh? That's right. You heard that correctly. One of the best Bayonettas in the world believes that their character is the best in the game. It's quite admirable to think that someone believes their character to be the best in Smash Ultimate that aren't either of these two menaces. To be fair, there has been a pretty significant rise in Bayonetta stocks across the world. So, today, I'm back with yet another retrospective to find out if there's potential for Bayonetta to be the best in the game, or if she's still just a lot less mid-tier character. Yeah. You don't need me to tell you about Bayonetta's impact in the Smash 4 days. I'm sure all of you Ultimate Zoomers know about the horrors and trauma this character caused across the world. Upon her release in early 2016, she was perceived to be one of the best in the game, and despite her nerfs a month after her release, she still maintained the status of best in the game for the majority of the game's lifespan. Bayonetta had an abundance of strengths, with her most controversial one being her zero to death potential. Off of one witch twist, Bayonetta could be taking you all the way to the blast zone. Smash 4 never hid the fact that multiple characters had early kill options. However, none could consistently kill as well or as early as Bayonetta. Even outside of witch twist setups, she had other reliable kill options like up air and back air. She also had an excellent recovery, a strong neutral and a solid disadvantage state. And we can't forget about Witch Time, a low risk, high reward move, which comes out on frame 5 and can last up to 4 seconds? Yeah, her kit was understandably controversial. By 2018, multiple majors had Bayonetta as their most prominent character, with top players such as Tweak and MKLeo picking her up in order to keep up with the meta. And more and more top 8s during this time were just filled with Bayonetta players. The meta just became very stale, and understandably, people were not having fun. A few states in America and Spain even considered a potential ban on the character due to how broken she was perceived. So, going into Ultimate, surely she wouldn't be anywhere near as broken, right? Right? Yeah, when the game came out, Bayonetta was perceived to be a pretty bad character. The character saw very little success during the early meta game, as many players deemed her to be a high risk, low reward character due to her underwhelming neutral and difficulty to close out stocks. Pretty much everything was nerfed. Her damage output was nerfed, Witch Twist granted less distance, moves were laggier, her aerials were no longer reliable kill options, outside of back air, but its hitbox was greatly reduced. Witch Time was actually a commitment now, and she was made even lighter, which impacted her survivability. All these nerfs resulted in many players thinking she was very much a low tier character, or worse. In June 2019, Bayonetta did receive some buffs in patch 3.1.0, with notable ones being up tilt connecting into itself more reliably, and less end lag on Afterburner Kick, Witch Twist, and Witch Time. However, despite this, players still did not see much potential in using the character at this time, which resulted in underwhelming results and little meta presence. As we progressed into the COVID era, Bayonetta did receive more buffs, which greatly improved her combo potential and kill power. During the online period, we saw a varying influx of players on the rise, and there was one player in particular which people kept their eyes on, Bloom Forever. Bloom was entering multiple Wi-Fi tournaments throughout this time, making a name for himself in both North America and Europe using Bayonetta. His most prominent result during this time was the Smash World Tour European qualifiers, placing first, primarily using Bayonetta. His play showed how good Bayonetta's advantage state was following the buffs. But could his results just be written off as Bayonetta being a very strong character on Wi-Fi? Nah, this guy's dominated my country with Bayonetta for years now. So, yeah, he's like... Fine. Despite the continued dominance with Bayonetta within Europe, there was still little rep of the character in North America and Japan at the time. The lack of rep landed her as a mid-tier, on the first official Smash Ultimate tier list. It wasn't until 2023 that more Bayonetta started to emerge. The most prominent two alongside Bloom would be Lima in North America and Tamapi Daifuku in Japan, with Lima placing highly at North American majors and Tamapi Daifuku having strong results towards the end of 2023, with wins over two of the best players in the world, Akola and Mia. Bayonetta stocks are on the rise, with top reps in three different regions of the world. But what's the reason for this? Why is she suddenly becoming more prominent in the current metagame? Well, I've spoken to Bloom Forever about it, and in his opinion, Bayonetta doesn't really have any characters or playstyles that outright invalidate her. She has an abundance of tools which makes her a very versatile character in today's meta. For example, some of her aerials can be difficult for characters to contest, which can make her defensive game pretty effective. Her afterburner kick is also great at covering space due to how fast it comes out and how much distance it can cover. It's also a pretty decent option to get off of ledge too, as it's hard to react to and Bayonetta can get a decent reward from it if it hits. Her buffs also meant that she can kill a lot more reliably. Up tilt back air is now a reliable kill confirm at high percents, and her jab is now a strong kill option as well. Her disadvantage state is also very strong, as it can be difficult to edgeguard and contest her recovery off stage, and she can mix up landings on stage well. 
When landing, she can either just retreat to ledge to get her resources back, or disengage from situations due to how much distance her specials take her. Finally, Witch Time can also be a very effective option Bayonetta can threaten in neutral, due to how rewarding it can be for her to use it. The move has been drastically nerfed from Smash 4, but can still be effective in neutral or help her land. Compile all these buffs into one, and it makes Bayonetta a relatively safe character with a strong risk reward game. Also, having a frame 2 option which can help you reset situations or escape disadvantage states will always be beneficial, no matter how good or bad of a character you are. But of course, unless you're like him, your character is going to have some flaws. The main problem with Bayonetta is that she struggles to approach. Sure, Afterburner Kick is a quick option which can cover a lot of space, but if Bayonetta hits their opponent's shield, it does very little shield damage and she's forced to retreat in order to not be punished. Her ground ability is also lackluster, meaning grounded approaches can be relatively telegraphed. Like, you're never going to see anyone successfully approach and kill with forward tilt. However, if someone has ever done this successfully, please leave a video with a timestamp in the comments below, because that does sound really funny. This flaw can sometimes hinder how easy it is for her to make comebacks, as opponents aren't giving her the opportunities to approach, and instead are camping and making her life just that little bit more difficult. She's also pretty big and a very light character, meaning she can be prone to losing socks early. And despite her stupidly good advantage state, there are certain percents that Bayonetta can really struggle to kill. At higher percents, her most reliable kill options are back air and jab, which are a pretty underwhelming amount of kill options compared to a lot of the cast. These limited kill options can result in players living to very high percents, just because Bayonetta cannot find that kill. Still though, whilst these flaws can be frustrating for Bayonetta players to deal with, we've still seen an influx in this player base, and it's likely due to the top Bayonetta's really pushing her meta and perfecting her advantage state. Right. That was a lot to take in, wasn't it? Shall we move on to matchups? There isn't a matchup chart I can really refer to, but I've asked Bloom about his thoughts on matchups, and he believes that Bayonetta is very solid versus most of the cast, beating top tier characters such as Palutena, Rob, and Cloud, all three of which are very commonly used in the meta nowadays. The consensus seems to be that Bayonetta doesn't have the most fun time versus Roy, Pyro and Mithra, and Diddy Kong. Roy and Mithra are both very mobile with fast frame data, meaning they can often overwhelm Bayonetta as she does not have the frame data to keep up with them. Roy and Mithra also force lots of unfavourable rock, paper, scissors situations for Bayonetta. This infers that whilst Bayonetta does have a lot of tools to deal with a lot of their options, she typically won't have as big of a reward for punishing them compared to the other way around. These characters can make it very much an uphill battle for her. Diddy Kong can be problematic as he can play at mid-range, resulting in the Bayonetta player having to make more commitments in order to secure their hits. She can't play anywhere near as safe as other matchups, due to the threat of a potassium-based produce found in your local grocery store. Paired with his fast ground mobility, Banana allows Diddy to whiff punish Bayonetta and cover her landings well, which makes him one of the best characters to abuse her disadvantage state. So with all this in mind, can Bayonetta be considered the best character in the game? No. I don't think so. But players are starting to realise that she's seemingly a lot better than we initially thought, with some top players placing her in top tier. With knockback buffs and reduced lag on her kit, she's been able to see a steady increase in usage post-Covid. We've also seen a development in her advantage state, meaning we're seeing things like this again. Cool! We'll never see a world where Bayonetta is quite as dominant and polarising as she was in Smash 4. However, just because she's not as good in this game, it doesn't mean she doesn't have a place among the higher tier characters. As her meta continues to develop, and the top preps continue to advance her metagame, it wouldn't surprise me if she's considered to be a solid top tier character relatively soon.